Wouldn't y'all like to be at our house with teenagers this afternoon? Oh, it's going to be fun. Oh, gosh. I can't wait. You might actually get a shorter sermon today. Oh, those are my teenagers that were messing up this morning. Sorry, that, that, that's why. He said no. Grab your Bible. Oh, the great Bible. We, we did do a lot of more new stuff with version. If you don't have your version, if you have a version app, if you'll go to live on the left side, uh, all the notes are there, all the verses are there. Um, looks kind of like that. But scroll down real quick. I want to show you something new we added. Right down there at the bottom, each week, now you can send your prayer request in. If you've got something going on in your life and you want to, you want to get that on our power line, our weekly prayer, you can send it right there. It'll bump right to us. Uh, and then we'll add it to, we'll even go to the prayer chain, which is all of our northerners pray for that uh, each week or each time a prayer uh, request goes out. So if you want to do that, do that. And then when you're up north, if you all are going back home and you want to join us again, down at the bottom of that very bottom, you'll see watch online. So if you're up north, you can log in on a Sunday morning, click right there on your phone or your iPad or wherever, and it'll take you right over. Oh, it brought me flowers. That's good. Impromptu. Impromptu flowers. If you don't have you version, you can get it. If not, turn in your Bibles to John. John. I keep hitting the Bible, and that's not where I want to go. Morg, Morg. Somebody says this ain't working. Is number one unmuted? No. All right, we've been looking for a few weeks. That better coming on. There you go. Looking a few weeks about um, the things that Jesus said when he said, I am. Uh, he said over, he said seven of those, and we've looked at three, uh, or actually we've looked at two really in depth, and we just kind of mentioned that when he started, he said, I'm the resurrection and the life. I am the resurrection. So uh, that, that means a lot to you if you'll just kind of study that for a little bit. It didn't just mean that he was resurrected. He is the resurrection. So your life is now new because of him inside of you you're raised from life it's the picture that we saw with asha in the water um, when you die to G, when, when you accept christ your old man dies okay so you're raised that picture of that water you go under you're dead you're buried you come back up everything's washed off you've started fresh brand new okay so he is that jesus is that resurrection and he is that life and then he came and he said that i am the good shepherd meaning there's some bad shepherds but he's the good shepherd, and if he's the shepherd, you're the sheep. You're the stupid. You're the stubborn. You're the defenseless. You're the stinky, smelly sheep. We all are. That's just our role in this game. And without the shepherd, we'll wander off a cliff really easily. Uh, and what's really cool about that good shepherd is he'll leave 99 and go find the one that he's after. Uh, and and we, we saw it happen that week that, that he went after one, the one of the 99. That, and, and found him. So can you imagine being the one? You were the one when Jesus found you. If you're a Christian today, Jesus found you one day because he focused his energy and his effort right onto you to win you. And he could be doing that today if you don't know him. And then last week we looked at that he said, I am the light of the world. I am the light of the world. And not only that, but he's the light of your world. He should be lighting up everything about you. You, you should be following that light. You should be living in that light. You should, when you find yourself outside of the light, you're the one that moved. The light doesn't ever go. He says, I'm always going to be there. I am the light of the world. I'm the light of your world. And then now, today we're going to look, one of my favorite verses. Um, I did a whole almost sermon series on this one little verse, but we're going to look at a little different context today. He said, I am the vine. And he says, you are the branches. Absolutely. This is uh, John chapter 15, verse 5. That's that first one. I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him, he bears much fruit. Or for apart from me, you can do nothing. That may be hard. That may be hard for them to read, Morgan. More. That's okay. You can just leave it up there. And if we're not, there's a Bible in front of you in the pew. You can, you can, we can get old-fashioned, right, Blanche? We use a Bible. Whoa. Crazy stuff. That's what he says. He says, I am the vine. Now, if you look at a couple of other versions... There's a, there's, a, there's a word missing there. In one of the versions, it says, I am the true vine. Yeah, who's got that one in their Bible? I am the true vine. I love that version. I am the true vine because if, if he's the true vine, that means there must be some false vines. Absolutely. And, and we know 
that there's false vines out there. Just you living your life, you have experience in the fact that there are true, there's a true vine and there are some false vine. And, and that alone, that's pretty dramatic. Just him saying that, I'm the vine, you're the branches. You, 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 you abide in me and I in him, he bears much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. That's just a dramatic statement. Really good, got a lot of meat there, but let's contextualize it because I think you've always got to do that when you read a verse in the Bible. Find out what he was talking about, who he was talking to, what was going on. It gives the story so much more depth and makes you understand it a little better. So what was going on? This is John chapter 15. Well, in John chapter 13, we have the Last Supper. Um, you know what the Last Supper is, right? The Last Supper <laughs> that Jesus had with his disciples before he was taken away and crucified. So that's John chapter 13. John chapter 18, we have Jesus being arrested and subsequently being crucified. So John chapter 15, we have dinner conversation. That's what's going on. They had, they, had, they had started the Last Supper. And then he spends this whole time talking to them about stuff. Let me ask you, if you had, if I brought you together and I said, okay, this is your last meal with your family and your friends. We're going to have supper together. Last meal you're ever going to have with them. You're gone. You're done. You're checking out. What would you talk about? What, what, would, you, what would you say to them? Would it be time for you to impart the last bit of, like the most important thing you wanted them to remember? Because we all know that the last thing you hear from someone is the thing you remember the most. What would you say to people? What would you say to your family and your friends if, if I told you this is it? This is your last chance to teach them, show them, talk to them about anything. That's what Jesus did. Jesus knew this was the last time they were all going to be together. He had them all group, and he chose to tell them this. I am the vine. You're the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. And apart from me, you can do nothing. Wow. So, let's look. I, we did get a visual. It took me a little while. It was raining this morning. I couldn't get the visual I wanted. But this is a cool, this is a cool, and it's a vine. It, 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 it does some things, but this is a, a healthy vine. If you look down in here, you'll find bamboo lives in rock. Okay, and, and water. So it's got its substance, it's got its foundation, it's got everything it needs, it's growing, it's healthy. If this was at our house, it would look a little different, but uh, this one is healthy. We borrowed it. Uh, you like it? I think I can sit it right here and not fall. I am the true vine. That, that's what you should think of when you see a vine. Now, this is you. Now, it's you. It's you. It's just a vine. It's just a branch. I'm sorry, it's just a branch. That's the vine. It's the branch. Jesus says, that's me. This is you. It doesn't really have anything. It has no substance. It has no foundation. You have nothing to offer. You, you cannot survive. I take this. All of my landscaping friends who are in the room will tell me. If I just lay this over there, it'll start to turn brown, it'll start to wither away, and then it'll be good to burn up. We'll see that in the end. Jesus says that too. That's you. That's you. Maybe you're not as big as the rest of us. That's you. That's him. He's flourishing. He's got everything he needs. Doesn't need anything else. That's you. Option A, option B. Which one would you rather have? Which one would you rather be? Hey, that's right, option A. Then why do you live like option B? Because this is how you and I live all the time. Just swinging in the breeze. Not connected. Doing my own thing. Things fall off. Start to die. You never go back to the vine. See, Jesus says, I'm the vine, you're the branch. If you'll remain in me, and I in you, then you will bear much fruit. We want to be connected. Here's your point. You want to be connected to the vine. I am the true vine. There, and we said there's a lot of false vines out there. 
That's really holy water. But this is how you and I like to live. I'll just, if I throw it in there, will somebody get it? <laughs> Morgan will. Funny. That's where we live. We try to live phosphine. I'm going to use that in a minute. What's that look like to you? What, how are you? what kind of phosphines are you connected to? Well, you know, if, if I could just get that next, if I could just get that promotion, man, if I could get, it, that would make it. I'd be set for life. If I get that one job, if I, get that, if I could just get out of my one spot and go to the next spot, I'm going to be good. False fine. Man, if I just, man, if my kids did this or if they did that, man, I think our family would be great. False fine. If I could just, if I could just get this social status, you know, or if I could just get this, if I could just one more thing, just, false fine. Jesus says, I'm the true vine. All you have to worry about is abiding in me. Do you, you understand? I get accused a lot of times of making this, God, this Jesus story really simple. A little too simplistic. I just think that's how Jesus planned it. Just like right now. If you'll abide in me, you will bear much fruit. But don't I, have to, don't I have to do this? No, you have to abide in me. But, but don't I, but I got to put some effort. You need to abide in that. Put your effort in abiding in me, and then you'll bear much fruit. But, but don't I, that's, that can't be. Abide in me, and you will bear much fruit. It doesn't get any simpler than that. Instead, We'll hold on to that idea of being the branch that's swinging in the wind and then gripe about how the... I just don't feel close enough to God to do that stuff. I don't ever see any miracles in my life. I don't, I don't ever see God working. I, I don't... And then the preacher tells me all I got to do is abide in Him. That's just too easy. That, that can't be right. So I'll do nothing. I'll just hang out over here and wait for God to reveal something to me. You do that. Let me know how it's working out for you. Abide in me. I, I am the vine, you're the branches. Abide in me. I'm the life source. I'm the one that's plugged in. I've got the only connection to God. I'm the only one that can channel everything that God has for your life into your life. I'm the only way you're going to get it. Quit trying to bypass me. Quit trying to do it in any other way. I'm the only way. I am the way. He said, the way. Why not? Well, I'm going to go out and produce fruit. I'm going to go out and do some things. I'm going to start a ministry. Okay. I'm going to do this. And I'm going to do that. Yay. No way. Now I'm going to make some fruit. Jesus would say, nope, fruit's over here. I've got the way you make the fruit. You want to see fruit in your life? Hang out in me. Abide in me. The fruit will come. We attach ourselves to these false vines. Jesus would say, that's not fruit. Stay connected to the vine, and I'll show you what fruit is. Why is it so important to stay connected. Why is this a big deal? So, okay, let's just pretend. I'm, uh, maybe I don't want to stay connected. Is that okay? Why is it important? Why do I need to stay connected to the vine? Why do I need to make fruit? Why do I need to produce fruit? Why do I need to show that I, why do I need to do that? I think you need to memorize John 15, 5 before we leave today. Because he says, I'm the vine, you're the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, that's the part, this is the why. Apart from me, you can do how much stuff? Now that, that, and that doesn't mean you can't do anything for God. That means you can do nothing. You just circle. You just, you'll, just, you'll just wander around in your life, not getting anywhere, not feeling that you're successful, not feeling you're, you're doing anything for anybody. Yeah, you might have one or two things going on, but then it goes away. It ends up being nothing. Because nothing is nothing. It's not something. It's always nothing. 
So what do I want to show? Galatians 5, 22 to 23 tells us what you're going to show whenever you stay connected to the vine. It says, but the fruit of the Spirit is, bug, no, sorry, love, joy, peace, patience, forbearance, close enough, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, and 23, gentleness, self-control. Oh, I was good to use self-control. I don't really want that fruit. Right, did y'all pick some of the fruit out there that you wanted? Didn't you see a few you wanted? Oh, I'd really like to be patient. Oh, I'd really, I'm not very, I'd really like to be gentle. Self-control, eh, I'm okay. Then we need to start to kind of pick them out. Jesus says, if you'll stay with me, you'll bear, you'll bear mud. Not you might bear. Oh, check this out. Not that you might bear some of the fruit. Not that you could bear fruit. Not that you'll bear, not that you will bear a fruit. How many of y'all ever said, that's my fruit? Uh-huh. That one right there, I'm gentle. That's me. I'm, that's the fruit that Jesus produced in me. Yes, that one, that one. The rest of them, he just decided not to produce. You know, I'm a, I'm a gentle tree, not a self-control tree. You ever heard that? I've heard that. Christians, like, a, that's the fruit that Jesus puts in me. No, Jesus puts those fruit in you, every one of them. He's got like this hybrid tree. You've seen the hybrid? Mike has a hybrid tree. It does lemons, limes, oranges, right? Does all three fruits. Do you believe that? That's a cool tree. Only he can pull that garbage off. That's what Jesus does. Jesus says, here's the fruit that I'm going to produce, and if you hang out in me, fruit. You're going to have them, all of them, because this is the fruit of the Spirit. Not some of the fruits, not the fruit you might get, but the fruit. You're going to have love. You're going to have joy. You're going to have peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness. I'm not very faithful. Well, I'm not very faithful. Because you're not abiding in Him. This is simple stuff. I'm uh, gentle. Not very gentle. That's your fault. You're not in Him. You want to be gentle? Abide in Him. Get closer to Him. Do some stuff with Him. Quit doing it on your own. Quit being a vine that's wiggling out in the wind. You'll be more that you'll be these things. All of them. I mean, when I read that list, I'm like, man, I want those. I want to be that. I mean, how many of y'all leave that list and go, man, if I could do that, my life would be so much better? Think about it. Jesus says, duh, stupid moron sheep. That's what he said. Just bear, just hang out with me. We will bear these things if we abide in him. If we abide in him. You see, Jesus wants us to do what he wants us to do when he wants us to do it. That's abiding in Him. That's abiding in Him. Jesus has probably planted something in your life that, he, that you know He wanted you to do. And instead of doing it, you just said, nah. And out of that comes non-gentleness, non-patience, non-love, non-joy, all that stuff. That's what happens when you're not on the tree. You don't get the fruit. So you can't have joy, you can't have peace, you can't have patience and love. You can't have those things because you're not in the tree. All of us have experienced that. And we will continue to experience that. Because when we abide in Him, we start doing the things that Jesus would want us to do. And when we're not with Him, we start doing the things that we want to do. Typically, whenever Jesus has me to do something, my first argument is, I'm not really equipped for that. That sounds like something I would have to do if I lived somewhere else. Uh-oh. Have you ever done that? Jesus gives you a heart for something, and you're like, well, that'd be nice if I lived in Africa. And Jesus is like, I'm in a pot. We can go to Africa. Get it? As soon as he says we should do something, we find out the reasons we cannot do it. We give him all the practical purpose. We give him all the practical reasons. No, Jesus, come on. You know I can't do that. That's funny. That'd be good. That'd be nice. I'd like to see myself do that. I just can't. And you know God because, you know, we, you know, we got our kids and they're, they're in school. And, you know, and we, got our, you know, we got that job that I know you gave me, God. There's no way I can do that because of that job. And, duh. And it's like we expect God to be up there going, oh, crap, I forgot about that. Man, sorry, I, I, I wouldn't ask you to do it. I'm sorry. 
Uh, we'll do something else. What do you think we should do? This actually happened in the Old Testament. Moses and the children are out, they're wandering around the desert. They whined and griped about not having anything to eat, so God gave them manna, which is bread. And then they whined and cried because they had too much bread. <laughs> so they were like, we want meat. And God says, okay, I'll give you meat. So Moses says, God, and this is my paraphrase, you can read it your own way. God, I don't know if you understand or not, but we're in the desert. There's nothing really to eat out here. Now, I understand you threw bread down from heaven. That was cool. But what are we going to do about meat? We got nothing. And here's what God responded. Moses, is my arm too short? You, and, and in essence, he was saying, Moses, you mean you've, you've, you've gone so far that I can't touch you? You've found the out of reach for God? And that's how you and I kind of operate. Maybe it's, yeah, but I've done way too much. I've been way too bad for way too long. God will never love me. And God would say, my arm's that short that, that you found the magical formula that beats everything the Bible says about me? And, and then he tells you and I to do something, and we're Christians, and boom. And we're like, I can't do that, God. Man, I got too much tied up in this, and I'm invested here and, and there. And he's like, so you found the magical formula that keeps you out of my will. You found the way to stay away from the vine. And I'm supposed to be okay with that, God would say. No, he'll let you. He'll let you just kind of hang out by yourself. Start to wither. Start to wither. I don't know where you're at. But maybe it looks like I've been praying for this guy for a long, long time. And I, and I really thought that I just want him to find God. But instead, it seems like he's, he's moving far away. What am I supposed to do about that? Stay abiding. Sea grapes and bamboo. We'll see what happens. Right? See what happens. Maybe you, maybe you can't seem to hold your tongue. Married guys, can I get a witness? You really want to, you know, you, you really want to control yourself. You really want to stop saying the things you say. And you almost say, and, and so you say, God, why can't, why can't I fix that? Why, why can't I stop? S stay abiding. But I've, I used to have that, God, and I want to I wanna stop doing the things I used to do. Can you, why can't I do it? Stay firmly planted, abiding in me. You know, it's the little things that bother you that are actually your desire to work on, that Jesus says, stay with me. J j stay with me. Well, now you're sounding pretty churchy, preachy. What does that mean? How do I, how do I abide? What, what's that look like? What, can you be abiding and praying? Yeah. Secret, yes. Can you be abiding and reading your Bible? Uh-huh. Can you be abiding and, and hanging out and, and going to church and, and, and staying around other people who are positive? Can, is that abiding? Yeah. Is it abiding, staying away from the things that you know are bad for you? Yeah. All those things are abiding. Abiding is easy. There's no magic. Abiding is to simply stay where Jesus is. I know I can find him in my prayer life. I know I can find him in my, in my Bible. Well, I've prayed and I've prayed. He doesn't say abide for a little while and if it happens to not work out, jump out of the pot. He says the word there is remain. remain. Well, how long do I have to stay? It doesn't say stay. It says remain. Remain is forever. I'm going to remain married. I'm not just trying to stay married. I'm going to remain that way, as long as I'm good. No, that was just for me. That was not God. Jesus said, if you will remain, you will bear much fruit. There's a fruit forecast if you stay there. It's 
You're going to see fruit. There's going to be fruit. Guaranteed. Well, I've been abiding. I ain't seeing no fruit. Really? You have? You, you've been abiding? Well, I didn't flip that guy off when I was running down the street the other day. I prayed for him. I prayed he got hit. I was abiding. I mean, I got this little thing that pops up on my phone that's a verse of the day. I'm abiding. I, see, I go right past that when I'm getting to the USA Today. I, I see it. That's the first thing I see. I'm abiding. Really? Really? Spend more time on Facebook. I spend, you know, I, I spend some time in my Bible. And I spend two, three times more on Facebook, but I'm abiding. I read a lot. I read a verse a day. I read a paragraph a day. I read a chapter a day. And then I read two other books. <laughs> That's abiding. Yeah, sure. Whatever. You keep telling yourself that. It's very important to stay connected. <laughs> And then the end of it, remember he said, and then, so if I'm not connected, it does nothing. If you do, remain, do not remain in me, here he says in verse 15, 6, if you do not remain in me, do not remain, step out, you are like a branch that is thrown away and withers. I can't make it wither fast. Wither. There you go. Yeah, it's there you go. Thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up, broken, thrown into the fire and burned. Last time I burnt something in here, I got in trouble, so I'm not burning it. So what happens when this happens? I tell you, yeah, nothing happens, but I tell you, I can tell you if you're like this or not. You are one judgmental fella. My life sucks. Can you, can you see what they're doing out there? Did you, do you understand? I can't believe they're like that. That's what happens. That's kind of where we find ourselves living. When we're disconnected, we find ourselves looking at others because misery loves company. Remember? Sheep stuck in the, stuck in the, in the rock. Mm -hmm. Getting ready to go over a cliff. We love to find other people that will, that will join us over here in our fake vines. Or we look around and we go, we can't be wrong. Look at all the people living in this vine. Where do you invest? Uh, let me step on some toes. Where do you invest your money? Well, I put it in the stock market because I'm really, really smart. And look at all the other people who are doing it. And what happened in 2008 when something hit the tank? Everybody. That's not very nice. They messed up my money. Those bad banks, those guys are crazy. They stole my money. No, you gave it to him. You wrote him a check. Abide. And that could be a horrible example. I don't know. Abide. How many of you have ever looked at someone and thought, I would never do that? That's not living in the vine. How many of you have ever said, well, my kids would never act like that? <laughs> Y'all not living in the vine. <laughs> well, my, if my husband ever did that, I'd, 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 yeah, I would. You ever done that? That's not living in the vine. We've been talking about that in Sunday school for about three weeks. Everything that happens in this world is your fault. Everything that happens that's wrong, it's your fault. <laughs> Every bad attitude you got, it's your fault. Every time you talk bad about somebody or, or a situation, it's your fault. You see, the Bible tells us all these things that we're supposed to do, the attitude we're supposed to have. We're supposed to be living in the vine. Can you imagine living in the vine? Abiding in Jesus. And then looking out the world and Tell them how bad they are, how wrong they are. Can you imagine just sitting on one of Jesus' limbs, holding a God hates fag sign? 
Can you imagine, can you imagine sitting on that tree? Because that's where people think they are when they're holding those signs. Imagine. Maybe yours isn't. Maybe yours isn't quite as bad. I don't know. Maybe you're on a bottom limb. But we're all there, thinking we're in that vine, in a false vine, spouting out things that we think Jesus would look like fruit, and Jesus is over on his vine going, that ain't fruit. That's plastic. Anybody ever picked up a plastic apple and took a bite? Be nasty, wouldn't it? And yet, we're out there trying to get the world to take a bite of our plastic fruit all the time. But I look like Jesus. I'm acting like Jesus. Take a bite. Not. Jesus says, that's not fruit. Stay away from that. Here's what I know. Nothing Satan has to offer is out of reach when we are disconnected. Nobody is incapable of doing anything when they're disconnected. When you think about all those bad things, you stay disconnected from Jesus, don't remain on his vine, and you're capable of doing every single thing that you're looking at people going, I cannot believe they're like that. You're just like them, disconnected from the vine. Because if it doesn't look like Jesus, it's not going to happen on the vine. So you can do that. You can pray and you can do those things. But you know what? I'm going to give you two practical things. Do I got time? Oh, yeah, I got plenty of time. We don't have to get out to 1.30. Uh, here's a couple of things. First thing, maybe you and I just need to start maybe giving more, G more Jesus acknowledgement for the things that happen in your life. Being a little more thankful for the stuff that does go on in your life, good or bad. Stop it with the, but I ain't got nothing good going on. Good or bad. And saying, Jesus, this is the life I've got today. I'm abiding in you, and we're going to take it as it comes. Thank you for today. I might have lost my job, might have lost my house. I'm thanking you for today. See, that's when it's hard. Simple to stand up and say, thank you, Jesus, for the sunshine. Thank you, Jesus, for my life. I don't have any worries whatsoever. Da, 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 da. Well, it's tough to just be thanking God every single day for every single thing that happens. Here, but, but here's what do. Here's the first thing you do to divide. Do what Jesus says. Do what Jesus says. John chapter 15, verse 10 says, If you keep my commandments, you will remain in my love. Now, he has already said, If you love me, you'll keep my commands. Which means, prove me you love me by keeping my commands. That's not what he said. He said, if you love me, meaning you and I have this love relationship, you'll automatically keep my commands. Totally different sermon. But it goes right along to here. And since you love me and you're keeping my commands, now, when you, when, if you keep my commands, you will remain in my love. It's a circle. Because I love you, I'm going to keep your commands. And because I'm keeping your commands, I'm remaining in your love. What could be better than that? Nothing. Nothing. That's what you should have said. Nothing. Here's how Francis Chan talks about this and he nobody's ever done any better so we're just going to use his it's like a mother who looks at her kids and says did you clean your room and if you've ever said that to a child imagine your child saying this to you well I memorized what you said about cleaning my room but did you clean your room I got it tattooed right here in Hebrew, what you said about cleaning my room. So that everyone will know that I know what you said about cleaning my room. But did you clean your room? Well, I got some friends together and we met for a little study about cleaning my room. And we found out that clean means clean deo in the Greek. And it means to clean with haste and much fortitude. But did you clean your room? Well, I went to this conference. And they taught me how I could clean more effectively and more efficiently using today's modern technology to make cleaning an easier task. But did you clean your room? God might be saying to you. 
but did you clean your room? You see, that thing that I told you about earlier that God's been telling you to do, that you've been making excuses to do, it's God saying, did you clean your room? Some of us just need to clean our room. We've got all the Bible knowledge we possibly need for today. We just need to clean our room. We just need to do what Jesus says. How many of you have ever made an excuse not to go on a mission trip? Quit your lying. Because I asked you all to go to Guatemala two years ago, and only three of you went. Ha, 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 you made an excuse. And you made an excuse. You didn't just say no. That would have been probably okay. You could remain in the vine and say no. But when you make an excuse, that's not living in the vine. No is an acceptable answer to the world, to anything. But to say, no, I can't do that because I got a smart day to wax the car. No, I can't afford that. No, I can't do that. No, I just, no, I don't think God wants me to go. That's cool. Some of you need to clean your room. Some of you have been asked to take a job somewhere. Not going to, can't. Clean your room. You see, God doesn't do option A and option B. He only does option J. You liked that, didn't you? Option J. He's only got option J. You've been asking yourself, you, you, you know, God told you to do something. Have you ever done this? Listen, I've been praying. And I think God wants me to do this. What do you think? You ever done that? Kind of okay. Especially when they say things like, absolutely. I think you're totally cut out for that. And you go, I got to go check with somebody else. And you find somebody else to say. You know, and so when you get to like 50 people that have all told you the same thing, you're like, maybe, might. Clean your room. Just clean your room. You want to learn how to abide? Just do what Jesus said. Clean your room. If you keep my commands, you'll remain in my love. Don't make me raise your hand about your Ten Commandment thing again. Do what Jesus says. Clean your room. Next one. Last one. You want to abide? Do what Jesus says. Love, and we talked about this in our Sunday school class this morning, which is really, really cool. Love like Jesus loves. That's kind of simple. But Jesus raises it up a notch. John 15, verse 12. Here he says, you know, you raise, keep my command. This is what's really funny. And since disciples are stupid, dumb, stubborn, defenseless, and stinky sheep, he says, my command is this, colon. I don't know if he said colon. Love each other as I have loved you. Now, I've always read the Bible and thought it would have been much better if Jesus put the period after other. Love each other, period. Wouldn't that be better? Because that's subjective. And then I can decide how I want to love you. I can decide if I want to love you in a certain way. i got to love you. I don't have to like you if the period was after other but it's not after other the period is after you love each other as I have loved you you know when you were an idiot and Jesus loved you so much that he died on the cross so that you could find him and live forever in his love love each other that way are you doing that? Well, I know he said that, but come on. What's that look like? It looks a lot different than the way you and I love. You see, the disciples at this point, right before when they were walking over to Jerusalem for the Passover meal, they were arguing about who was the greatest. I guess in our world it would be who does the most. Who, who, who helps the most, who gives the most, who is the most, who looks the best, who, whatever. That's what they're after. Who's the greatest in heaven, they would say to Jesus. Well, when they got to the upper room, Jesus put a towel around his waist, knelt down at each one of their bare, nasty feet and showed them. He showed them. 
He says, I'll tell you who the greatest is. It's the one who serves. And when he said serve, he meant love. Because loving and serving go hand in hand. Serving others, loving others. And then in dramatic fashion, after he did that at dinner, he says, I am the vine, and you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you'll bear much fruit. Apart from me, you'll do nothing. If you keep my commands, you'll remain in my love. And my command is this, love each other as I have loved you. And then he finishes it, greater man has no, greater love has no man than this, that he lays his life down for his friends. Jesus was the king at kicking it up a notch. <laughs> greater love. So whenever you think you've reached the pinnacle, you know, you're in the vine and you're loving people the way Jesus would have you love them, and you've reached your limit, Jesus says, no, 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 there's more. Until you're ready to die for them, you're not there yet. You can get there if you abide in me. And that's when you and I will probably start to run. We're not going to love each other that way. Maybe her, maybe the kids, maybe the mother-in-law, maybe the mother, but not everybody. We all have our list. And Jesus says, "Bad me, and you'll see that there's no greater love. When you get there, you don't have these excuses anymore. So I'm going to ask you, we're going to do communion. So if you've been asked to help with communion, if you'll just meet up here with this stuff, they'll get you set up. But here's your question before you walk up. We consider this God's table. God, you know, we're coming to commune, to eat with, to hang out with God. Okay, so that's what, that's what you're doing when you walk up to these guys who are holding the elements of bread and, and wine. Here's what you're doing. You're walking up to him, God, and you're going, I want to abide with you. And God, you and I are on the same page. What you want, I want. You see, back in Jesus' time, you didn't go to somebody's table you didn't agree with. You didn't hang out together if you didn't see eye to eye. And that's what we're asking you to do. See eye to eye with God. To be considered on the vine when you come up here. That's why the Bible says before you do this, take a minute. Take a minute. Take a minute and straighten. Who are you going to straighten out before you come up here? Yourself. Straighten yourself out. Take a little bit and go, hey, God, why don't you show me right now where, where I'm lacking in this fruit department? Or maybe ask, what fruit is evidenced in your life? What is showing up in your life? What, what does it look, what's your life look like? And if, if your answers aren't those things in Galatians, you're not in abiding in him. You're not on his vine. I'm sorry. You're in some other vine. You may not be anywhere near a vine at all. But you're not in Jesus' vine. Today we're not allowed to say, well, I'm just not there yet. Because you're either abiding or you're not abiding. When you remain in Him, you will bear much fruit. If you're not bearing much fruit, you're not remaining in Him. That's just the long and short of it. Let us pray together before we come up. God, I pray that you'll show me and everybody in this room that will ask, what's my life look like, God? Does it look like your fruit? Does it look like my fruit? Am I really abiding or do I need to clean my room? And God, for those of us who'll say, you know what, I'm tired of talking about cleaning my room. I'm going to go do it. For those of you that, I'm going to pray for more courage than they walked in here with. That God, when we're sitting on that vine, living in that vine, remaining in you, God, and it starts to get tough, that we'll draw from your strength. 
pray a little more. We'll read a little more. We'll study a little more. Get as close to you as we possibly can. Remain in you. Thank you for the fact that we can jump right in with you. That we can tap in to the life source you have to offer. As we come to your table, God, make us shake with your reminder of what you want for our life. Make it so difficult to refuse you. Make it hurt, God, as you mold us into the people you want us to be. In your name we pray. Amen. His table is open, so if you just make your ways up and then return to your seat, we'll be dismissed as soon as we're all done.
Any other? So, I guess now our attitude can be one of a few things. Man, I'm glad that's over. Let's get to the beach. Let's get to eating. Let's get to whatever. Or it could be, I got a lot of stuff to work on. I got a lot of room to clean. Now it's up to you which attitude to have. Back to life, back to like it was. Didn't really learn anything today. Can't wait to get back out there. Or, man, my life needs to look a little different than it has been. I'm going to go clean my room. Nobody's going to follow you around and figure out what you did. Except for God. I do invite you to come back tonight. We're going to have movie night over in the retreat center. It's a good time just to fellowship with one another, eat some good appetizers, as long as you bring good appetizers. Hang out together. It's not about the movie. Quit asking what the movie is. It's TBA. It's a great movie about a guy and a girl who did a thing, and then they went and they lived somewhere, and it was cool. <laughs> See? It's a good, good movie. Don't want to miss it. Come and hang out together. Love one another. Sharpen one another. Just hang out. And then the rest of the stuff that's in the bulletin wants you to be a part of. We have Bible study in that coffee shop. We have two more, three more weeks in the, in the coffee shop, and then we're back to family fellowship meals in the retreat center. Summer's going to be over. School starts in three weeks. And so we go back over there. So we have three more weeks of a Bible study. We'll finish up in here. Uh, so come and be a part of that on Wednesday nights. Uh, dessert and coffee's at 6 and Bible studies at 6.15. Um, it's a good time. Good time to have just a great... We, that, built, that room was packed last week. Bring some more people. We'll put them in there. Jesus has got something for you in your life. For every stage of life you're in. Please don't sit out there and think, yeah, I've done my thing with God. Mm -mm. It's a daily thing. He's got something going on in your life. Just identify it and do it. Any word? Eh? Yep. Yep, I got him. She's back home now, right? She had a heart cat or a heart angiogram and a stress test and some things, so. Right. How many of y'all say you'll pray for Maria? I would tell you her last name, but you'll never forget it. I mean, you'll never remember it, so. Maria, I'll pray for her. Now, now you got to do that. <laughs> I told him I would. Yes, ma'am. Eugene, absolutely. He'll pray for Eugene. It's Eugene and Maria. Don't forget. Somebody put those on that U version. Somebody. Absolutely. Awesome. We glad you wandered in. Yes, sir. What is your name? 
Who will pray for Scott's friend Tim? I will. Hope somebody's putting this on you version. I will for you. Anybody else? It's what we're for. It's what we're doing. Hey. Tell me his first name again. Tim O'Neill. I don't have to ask the question again. Anybody else? Good stuff. Good stuff. And let's go out there and clean our rooms. Who'll pray for us as we go out? Dawn. Awesome. Would you pray for us? You looked at me. Thank you.